Welcome back. This week we're going to go with Kelly Gallup's Laser Legal. This is a variation of the Barely Legal, a fly that I use almost constantly on the Missouri, especially um, in the conehead version. This is one right here on the Mo that I use when things get absolutely desperate. <laughs> this it, it's it's just a smaller fly. It's a smaller profile. I tie it in three different colors: the rainbow one that Kelly did on his channel. This one's gonna be like a juvenile brown trout, even though I know juvenile brown trout aren't yellow bellied. Um, and then like a, a white fish color, which I use that one quite frequently actually um, but we're gonna do this one in the brown and yellow today we're gonna go ahead and get started uh, the back hook on this one is a 2461 one or no not it's not a one it's a four <laughs> it's a four not a one so we're gonna go ahead and get started on this this is a Daiichi and I dang near cut my thread we're going to take this right back to the ascent of the barb. And I'm just going to take this laser dub out of the package right now. Just to make things easier. So, starting on this, we're going to just peel this yellow marabou back and we're going to work how we typically do with the, the the streamers you start with something sparse on the back and you just progressively build bulk as you go forward so with this I'm going to take and measure it out just slightly longer than the size 4 hook that we're using keep that right where the Sorry, I'm trying to concentrate on tying and making sure I don't give bad information. Keeping this right where the ascent comes up, and then we're just tying this in for some excess bulk. Notice I'm not taking all the way to the front, I took it just a little bit past the halfway point, um, and that's just to, to help build our taper. I'm going to take a pretty sparse section of this brown laser dub. I'm going to wrap this around and we're going to tie this right in where we left off with the yellow. This is going to add in to our tail. If you want you can throw a little bit of flash in there um, I really don't find it necessary with this laser dub because I mean it has obviously some UV colors, UV flash in it. Um, not really necessary. So I'm going to move my thread forward. I'm going to create a quick dubbing loop. And then I'm going to take this to my halfway point. I'm going to stop it right there, get my dubbing tool. And this is just some hot yellow get it in the frame hot yellow um, ice dub you can do a loop if you want on this um, I prefer the or you can do a noodle or whatever the heck it is a, a rope whatever they call it I just prefer the the dubbing loop just gets up it's it's a little cleaner and the the material seems to be a little bit more picked out so we'll just throw a quick half hitch in there get that in the cradle and I got one wild fiber wanting to go rogue on me just gonna work this right up to my halfway point and then tie this off get rid of that loop, there we go don't 
don't worry too much about the length of this. Um, you can see the laser dub's a little bit longer than the Marabou. Don't worry about that right off. Oh, well, don't worry about it until you get ready to finish the fly up, actually. It'll, it'll make sense once we get there. Um, back to the Marabou on this. Go ahead and grab another piece of yellow. Like I said, progressively getting just a little bit wispier, a little bit thicker. Measure this out. It's going to go halfway back the last stack. Turn this upside down. Get this tied in. Get it good and secure. And then advance in front. Get one good solid wrap and then recapture. And come forward. The reason for getting that one good solid wrap in front, you now have not all of your wraps are now on the marabou. And if you're if you don't have the most secure wrap all the way through, it's gonna have a chance to rotate. If you give that one secure wrap around the hook shank and only the hook shank, it's just locked in. It's not gonna be able to rotate on you. Not that I know from experience. <laughs> All right, get back to where you were with this one. Right where you tied in your yellow, grab just slightly more of the laser dub. And if you want, you can run this through the comb. I'm just going to kind of straighten this out by hand. I'm going to have everything somewhat in order. Like I said, you can run it through the comb if you want. I just kind of like having it, being able to manipulate it in my hand. Make sure everything's going to slick back how we want, and then another dubbing loop. And then go ahead and advance your thread all the way to the front of the hook. Then we'll do a half hitch, get this back in the cradle, and then we're back with the ice stub. Just continuing the body. Do a quick spin on this and don't lose control of your tool like I did. Make a mess right there, but Nothing's lost. <laughs> just made just made a little extra theatrics there for the video. That's all I was after. I didn't really lose control of it. <laughs> sure. Go ahead and take your ice dub body right up to the front. Give it a couple of good secure anchor wraps as you're moving forward. And tie this off. Oh. That's not going to work for later. Every once in a while, that tool likes to get fouled up on itself. But there we go. We're back in business. So right in front of the eye, leave yourself a little bit of space here. And then go back to the marabou. Like I said, just progressing slightly in thickness on these on these stacks. A little bit wispier on this plume. And then measure it up against the brown about halfway back. That looks good. Go ahead and get that set in. And then same thing right in front. Give a good secure wrap. Don't be afraid to really wrench down on that. It's not gonna you're not gonna bend a hook, you're not gonna break your thread if you're using the GSP, so go ahead and really wrench down on it. 
back to the laser dub on this and we're just gonna continually progress in thickness and bulk that looks pretty close to what we want bend that right around your thread get your get your thread wrap and your material set right where you want it and you can see this nice segmented body once it gets wet it kind of slicks back but you can still see all the segments and everything especially once it's wet it's just a really cool pattern I mean it's like I said this is my this is my go-to on the mow when things are really tough and I'm just struggling to even move a fish so we'll get that tied off there's the back portion of the hook or the back portion of the fly um, find my yellow marker here if you want you can dab that up with some glue I'm just gonna leave it that should be the last time I need that yellow like I said we're not gonna trim this yet we're gonna wait till the very end to trim all that the front hook is a Gami B10S and it has a 3 16 um, tungsten bead head on it. So I'm going to go back to my brown thread here. This is just a brown 6 aught. This is just going to be used for a base, something that's going to grab the allow the wire to grab a little bit you know more so than the GSP does I, I feel I, I don't know it may just be me but so I'm going to stop this right after the point of the hook and then grab I like throwing a bead on here I don't know for some reason I, I find a really small bead and then I'm going to get my articulation wire as well as long as the bead stays where it needs to be there we go and I can't find my wire there we go right where I left it so I'm going to tie this in take it just past the bead maybe halfway as long as the actual hook itself I'm going to take this as, cl as close to the bead as it will allow me. And then I'm just going to fold this back over halfway back and I'm going to trim it. There we go. Everything's looking good. I'm going to take this right where I left off with my thread. And then just give that a quick trim. Put my bead or my wire back there so I can forget where I put it. <laughs> Grab just the one, and I usually pick like a really thin bead. You'll see when when this is actually on the. You'll see. I mean, that's that's a lot smaller smaller than I typically use. I just like having the bead on there for some reason. I don't really know why but maybe it just helps me keep everything lined up and make sure like it's a just a just a guide as to how long my articulation point should be in the back so I need to just pull that a little tight everything looks good right there go ahead and secure that We'll take it up to the front. And then bring that wire back around. Oh, come on. Cut 
got it a little bit short and it's being a little stubborn. Doesn't quite want to cooperate with me here. But it's not more stubborn than I am, so I win. <laughs> oh my. Keep myself entertained around here. Okay, so you see I got a little bit of a bump with my wire right there. That's all going to smooth out as soon as I get back to the GSP and I can really wrench down on this stuff. I want that little bit of extra bulk here in the front so it starts pushing that bead back a little bit. So now, like I was saying, I can start smoothing that bump out a little bit with this gel spun thread. Just pulling a little tight on everything and you can see there's a nice smooth transition there. I'm going to zoom out just slightly so that way the entire fly stays in the frame and we're going to work our way back to where we left off with our thread and then what I'm going to do different on this one is these are two pretty sparse plumes that I have but that's by design because I'm going to use two. I'm going to bring one on my side, one on the camera side. Same thing halfway back the last stack. But this is going to act as a skirt. It's just going to give that nice clean transition between the front portion and the back portion of the fly. that one, clip that off at the halfway point, and then I'll bring, that's the one that I want for the front, I'll bring this around on the camera side, get this measured out, make it the same length as the one that was on my side, get a quick pinch on this, and then take this through. And there you go. You have a nice transition between your front and back hook with that skirt. Bring this up to the midway point yet again, and we'll go ahead and trim that off. And now we're going back to where we tied the two marabou plumes in, and we're going to put a little bit more bulk just keeping that overall theme going just increasing the bulk as we go through this fly a little bit more bulk on the top portion set that in loose wrap tight wrap now you can see how that's starting to Start, starting to really give that nice smooth transition between the, the back hook and the front. You can see, I mean, that looks pretty clean right there. Go ahead and create another dubbing loop. Take this to the halfway point. Grab some more ice dub. Don't get a ton of this. Don't get a ton of bulk. Keep this pretty slender, but yet still kind of picked out. And you'll really notice it when it's wet. When you're fishing this softer water when it's wet, you can really see to where the body actually marries into the under and over wings. And it I, I don't know, I mean, aesthetically, when you see it swimming, it just looks better. It doesn't really, as always, mean anything to the fish, but it just looks better. Confidence is what it builds. When your fly looks good in the water when it's swimming, it's just a little more confidence that you have in it. At least it does for me. 
So I got a little bit past the halfway point, but no worries on that. I'm going to cover up some of that with some thread wraps, and then I'm going to go back to the yellow marabou. And this one's the wispiest of all of them, because the wrap in front of this is going to be laser dubbed with the yellow on the bottom. So this is going to be a good wispy feather right here. I'm going to peel everything back. Trim off all of that excess. And then measure this out. It's going to go halfway back. I got too much there. That's too much. Still a little much. There we go. We're going halfway back for our last stack. We're going to work this in around the hook. Grab this with your left hand and then get one loose wrap second loose wrap just kind of give it a measure I mean if it's a little short if it's a little long you can adjust at this point it's just a shade on the long side so I'm going to pull this through and then you can go ahead and anchor that in and then go in front that looks pretty good looks good so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this yellow Bring this back right where I left off with the body. And then, once again, going back to the brown, just a little bit thicker. Just a little bit thicker. Wrap that around the hook again, or around my thread. Get it nice and flat, sitting on the on the hook. Loose, and then tighten as you go. And you can see already we're starting to get to this bead to where it's not going to go anywhere. But as we get to the front, and we get everything, we get all of our final materials in there. It's it's really going to be secured, so you don't have to go to great lengths adding material or lead wire or whatever it may be to get that stuff to to to, to get that head to stay. So last step for the body, make a final dubbing loop. Get the half hitch and everything in the cradle. Get your ice stub again right through here. Give it a quick spin. Same thing, try not to trap any of your marabou. I trapped one or two on that skirt. I wasn't too happy with, but everything worked out fine. And there we go. Your body is complete. Trim off that excess on the loop. And then instead of doing the marabou for the final one on this body, we're going to take some yellow ice dub and get pretty generous with this. Make sure everything's nice and even. Now you should have if you did this right, you should still have just a little gap between your ice dub body and your bead head. That's where this material is going to sink in. Go ahead and pull tight, and you can actually feel that material sucking back into the head. And then the last thing that we're going to do on this, we're going to throw this brown on the overwing. Get this thicker than what it was on everything else. This is going to be the thickest portion of your laser dub. Now I'm going to wrap this around my thread. Get this sticking right where I want it. 
and then pull tight. You can feel it pulling into that to that bead. So everything's good right there. Everything looks pretty solid. The last thing that we're going to do on this is I'm just going to take a little bit of this laser dub and I don't think I have enough room. I'm going to I'm going to do a dubbing loop anyhow. I just like these dubbing loops. Yeah, I got enough room. Everything's good. Yeah, we we'll get one quick dubbing loop in here and I'm going to make one final loop of yellow right in front of that bead. That just gives me a little bit more security, it gives me a little bit more strength to finish this thing off. Get this back in the cradle and take a very minimal amount on this. That's probably a little bit too much actually, but yeah, I'm going to take a little bit of that out. Go ahead and get that in the loop. Give this a quick spin. And you want this really nice and compact coming around here. And as you pull this, you're going to feel it just sink right into that head right into it and it's not sinking anymore so I know that I have all of the material going around there. I'm not worried about the head moving on me. I'm not worried about having a gap to where eventually it's going to shift. Everything in front of that bead head is as compact as it can be. And that's what we're looking for. You don't want this thing to wind up shifting on you to wind up just if it moves in the slightest, it's it's going to cause problems later on. You know, as you get one or two fish to really get to it, or if you fish this thing very long, it'll wind up not coming apart on you, but you'll have a head that just moves around. Finish this up with the last couple of wraps here and you're good to go. You can see we progress as we went on with this one. Let me peel this back a little bit. We've progressed as we've gone on in thickness on this laser dub and as we get to the front it's just a little bit heavier. Now all we're going to do is just stand this stuff up probably at like a 45 and just push our scissors right through this the entire way back. Not really cutting, not really trimming or anything but we're just pushing through it giving us a nice clean taper the entire way back and then we'll stand this stuff up same thing it's probably best to take this out of the vise quite honestly but I'm just gonna go right up the angle of my vise see how I it's it's going right up this angle and let me turn it to where it can be seen better I'm going right up that angle And just pushing my scissors right through it not really cutting not trimming and then I'll peel all this back for the final look and we're good to go there it is there is Kelly Gallup's laser legal this is the brown trout version the brown and yellow like I said, I do this one in the white fish with the gray on top, white on the bottom, and then, you know, the juvenile rainbow to where it's the um, yellow on the, or the white on the bottom and the, you know, all of the black, brownish mix. It's one. But, um, getting sidetracked. I got something else on my mind there before. Wanted to say something else, but decided to abort. Um, but there it is. Like I said, there's Kelly Gallup's um, Laser Legal in the Brown Chop version. If you guys have any questions or comments on this one, leave them with me and I'll get back to you as quick as I can. I got one hair there that I really don't like before I take the picture. But like I said, questions or comments, leave them with me. I'll get back to you. Thanks again for watching and we'll catch you on the next fly.